Well, hello, the internet. You're with Got That Funk, um, obviously. And as you are by now aware, I have to make videos in a pub, which means I couldn't really do the video I'm doing right now, the kind of justice I wanted to do for it. I originally wanted to, um, you know, include lots of sort of album artwork and uh, perhaps some live footage of the various bands, you know, whatever YouTube would let me get away with. But sadly, uh, the fact that I don't have internet access at home or electricity at home uh, has diminished my capability of making the video I kind of wanted to make. So I'm going to try to knock out the whole video here in this pub right now. And I apologize for the, uh, the lack of style in my presentation. This is just going to be a talking head video. And I wanted it to be so much more. I wanted the whole series to be so much more. I wanted to sort of break it down and do three bands at a time, like all the way down to number one. Um, with this video being the one about the near misses in number ten. But let's just get to that then. Uh, I am going to talk about some of the near misses briefly because I think it's important to show you how hard it is for me to make this video in the first place. You see, I feel very strongly that I can't put bands in my list of greatest bands of all time if I've not personally enjoyed them repeatedly. Um, their actual albums rather than just the songs they're known for. It's for this reason I couldn't include bands on their reputation alone. Because if I don't personally have their albums and enjoy their albums, I think it's completely preposterous to put them in my list. So basically we're limited to what I've got in my record collection or have had in my record collection over the years. And uh, that knocks out certain artists that really ought to be in the list. Uh, if you're going to talk about greatest bands of all time with the criteria that I listed, that criteria being diverse content, uh, epic reputation for live shows, um, influence on other bands that followed, uh, repeatability in terms of being able to listen to the music over and over without getting sick of it and a, a secret category I had in my own head was consecutive great albums and anyway those criteria are obviously met by any number of bands it depends on your personal taste of course and for my personal taste there are still some bands that fit the criteria that I couldn't fit in my list um, and some of the ones that I couldn't put on my list just because I know their reputation for music and I even have a lot of their songs I don't have any of their studio albums therefore I couldn't put them in. Bands like ABBA uh, who I think um, even though they're a pop band are one of the great bands of all time they fit the criteria perfectly and I still do enjoy their music even, even though it's uh, 30 odd years later. Um, Bob Marley is an excellent example of someone whose reputation is immense and whose music I've enjoyed for years and years and years but I've never listened to more than one proper Bob Marley album. I've always listened to compilation albums of Bob Marley. Same with Jimi Hendrix. Can't put Jimi in for the same reason so that kind of sucks. Oh, or Alice Cooper. I used to enjoy Alice Cooper all the time when I was younger and uh, I think his reputation for live shows uh, influenced many other bands that came out afterwards. So that was a kind of a bummer that I couldn't really put Alice in because I don't even own a single Alice Cooper album and haven't done for many years. Anyway, uh, so those ones I couldn't put in on the basis of reputation. Other bands that I couldn't put in that I wanted to put in, um, but when you're trying to knock things down to a top ten, unfortunately you have to leave some of your favorite bands out. Bands like The Who I think fit all my criteria. Bands like U2 fit my criteria, even though U2's musical content didn't variate as much as most of the other bands that did make the list. I think U2 is one of the great bands of all time. They have an amazing reputation for live shows. They have had consecutive great albums in a row, and I'm quite sure they have influenced other bands uh, that followed after them, but I didn't feel that the, the top 10 um, I didn't feel you could really mention credibly U2 in the same breath as Led Zeppelin, for example. And since we all know by now uh, from the last video that I made that Led Zeppelin will be on my list, I think that's a given. So I just don't think they compare. Same can be said for Public Enemy. I think Public Enemy has a great reputation for live shows. I wanted to include something from that genre in my list. And Public Enemy is probably fits most of the criteria, but unfortunately because of all the sampling in Public Enemy music, I just don't think there's enough musical variation in the whole of their product to merit being put on a list with bands like Led Zeppelin. 
However, I think they're great. I also try to think of a different hip hop act that I really like, uh, whose content of music is diverse. And I thought of Outkast, because I think their content is fantastic and it's incredibly varied. But I have no idea what Outkast's concerts are like, or even if Outkast does concerts. I don't even know. So I, I couldn't credibly put them in there. Bands I would have liked to include uh, who fit all the criteria, you know, great live acts, great content, etc., music with repeatability, uh, bands like The Who. Bands like ELO, um, I really felt I wanted to put those bands in there. Stevie Wonder, uh, among others, really wanted to get in there. Um, but sadly, when you're narrowing things down to 10, you have to be ruthless. One of my favorite bands of all time, and I'm talking about my top three that sort of tie for first place for me. One of them I had to leave out, and that is Rush. Rush has had the same four guys ever since their second album in 1971. And uh, same three guys, I mean. And I think that's impressive all by itself. You don't get very many bands who keep the same members. I mean, you've got U2, Rush, ZZ Top, and Queen, I think, um, who always kept the same members. Obviously, Led Zeppelin, when they were Led Zeppelin, um, when John Bonham died, they retired the name Led Zeppelin um, as a matter of respect to, toward him, and I think that's awesome. But not many bands keep the same members without any changes, especially the longer bands that go on for generation. Um, and some of those are on my list. But anyway, Rush should have been on my list. It's one of my favorite bands, like literally. And their content is amazing. Their concerts have been amazing for decades. And uh, they can also boast having a consecutive run of great albums unparalleled by very many bands. I mean, we're talking 2112, awesome. Farewell to Kings, awesome. Uh, Hemispheres, awesome. Permanent Waves, awesome. Uh, moving Pictures, awesome. Uh, Grace Under Pressure, amazing. Signals, amazing. Um, Hold Your Fire, amazing. Uh, I think there might have been one or two in between Signals and Hold Your Fire, though. I think Power Windows, maybe, and uh, Presto might have come between those. I can't remember the order off the top of my head, but they have had at least six or seven albums in a row. And very few bands can boast having that many epic albums in a row. But I couldn't fit them in my, my top ten, um, so I had to axe them in favor of other bands. Now, when I say some of these other acts that I'm going to mention, and you're going to say, Paul, how could you put that above blah, 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 whether it's Rush or someone else? And I'm going to try, in the, in the seven and a half minutes I've got here, I'm going to try to make a convincing case for each band being in my top ten. All right. At number ten, I've put in Michael Jackson. I have been a fan of Michael Jackson's music ever since I've been a fan of music itself, um, and Michael in particular. Uh, whether he's part of the Jackson 5 or later the Jacksons or his solo albums. I think his content has varied and grown and matured with Michael over the years, up to a point anyway. And um, I think that Michael's contribution to music can't be overstated, really. He influenced so many other acts, and his albums are incredibly enjoyable. I still listen to Thriller, I still listen to Bad, I still listen to Dangerous, I still listen to Off the Wall sometimes. Um, and I, I, I think he definitely deserves to be on the list. Um, he's one of the highest selling uh, artists of all time as well. And I think, although for me personally, that doesn't necessarily merit a place on the list, I think it is kind of a, a feather in his cap, shall we say. Same is true for my next artist on the, this list. And a lot of people are gonna say, when I, when I mention this artist, a lot of people are gonna say, Paul, how can you possibly compare that person to Led Zeppelin? And I'm not comparing them music for music, like for like, but I think if we're gonna talk about greatest acts of all time and use the criteria that I've used, you know, musically diverse content, reputation for great live shows, music has to be enjoyable repeatedly. What was the other one? Oh yeah, major influence on other acts to follow, etc. Then Madonna has got to be on the list. And Madonna's influence, not just on music but on pop culture, uh, is legendary and I think really important. She's definitely influenced other bands that come out after her, even if they are pop bands. Uh, Lady Gaga would never have happened if there was no Madonna first. Neither would Kylie Minogue or Beyonce or 
who else? Christina Aguilera. There's loads uh, that you could name uh, who have virtually copied Madonna's concert style. Madonna's live shows were absolutely amazing. Even her first tour, the Like a Virgin tour, um, fairly basic compared to what came later, but it's still an amazing show at that time, if you saw it at that time. I've also seen on video, I've seen the Blonde Ambition Tour, which is stunning, and I've seen the Girly Show, which again is stunning, and Madonna is bringing 110% to that performance by herself, and then she's got obviously a whole cabaret of uh, performance going on there. Madonna definitely deserves to be on a top 10 list of greatest fans of all time, in my opinion. Number eight on my list is one of my favorite bands ever. That's Yes. When you look at Yes's overall content and how the band has grown and changed over the years, I think they absolutely merit a awesome place on this list. During the 1970s in particular, Yes was the band to see live. Um, their stage shows were absolutely legendary. Um, there's one tour in particular, I think it was the Relay Tour, where the stage itself actually moved around and, and, and stuff. and um, sort of made you feel like you were in this uh, in this in the show yourself I, I only wish that I was a few years older at the time so I could have seen that uh, when it was brand new it would have been epic I'm running out of time here so I'm gonna have to zip through these a bit number seven on my list is David Bowie David Bowie's always been amazing live his musical content is incredible when you take it as a whole I can't think of many artists whose music has changed and matured as much as David Bowie's has. And David Bowie is unassailably cool as a person as well. Um, next on my list is Prince, uh, same as. I think Prince has influenced and directly helped out loads of other artists in his time. His musical content has got something like 40 albums in 30 years, 35 years. Not very many bands can say that. Prince Live was one of the best shows I've ever seen. I've seen Prince three times. Each of the three times completely different, each of the three times completely polished and just a mind-boggling experience. So yeah, Prince at number six. Number five on my list, one of my favorite concerts of all time, one of my favorite bands of all time, without a doubt, is Queen. Um, their live shows were stunning. Their influence on other bands, unquestionable. The diversity of their content, hell, even if you just take the one album, A Night at the Opera, that album is diverse in itself. Uh, all the songs sound different. And if you take Queen's entire discography as a collection and listen to them, you can definitely see a lot of progression in the band. I love the fact that Queen was always a pop rock band, but they were still a fucking rock band. Queen rocked, man. So yeah, I can't overstate how much I like Queen. And uh, when Freddie Mercury died, I actually cried. And uh, before that, I didn't really realize just how much I loved Queen. And uh, yeah, it was a big deal to me at the time. Number four on my list is Pink Floyd. Um, Pink Floyd has some of the must-own albums. If you like rock music, you must own Dark Side of the Moon. You must own Wish You Were Here. You must own The Wall. If you're a Pink Floyd fan, you must own Metal. You must own um, uh, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, uh, Amagama. Uh, their psychedelic 60s music is pretty far out and uh, every bit as good as their more popular and more well-known 70s music. And of course their live shows pretty much second to none in my experience. Number three on this list is Funkadelic. Now for me personally, I'm sure that doesn't come across as a surprise, but a lot of you might be thinking, Funkadelic, are you kidding? Uh, they can't be mentioned in the same breath as Led Zeppelin. Yeah, actually, uh, I think they can. I think if you actually familiarize yourself with Funkadelic's music, you will see that they are the Led Zeppelin of black music. I mean, they basically are. Their, their first five albums or six albums or seven albums or like that, something like that in a row, are completely different to each other. And a lot of the hip hop music that was sampling black music uh, was sampling Funkadelic. Back in the days when most hip hop music was nothing but samples, a lot of it was Funkadelic. So they definitely influenced other bands. Their live shows were absolutely legendary and Look at this, I'm fucking running out of time and i still got two bands to go. Number two on my list is Led Zeppelin for all of the reasons that I said in my last video. And I think Led Zeppelin um, is one of the greatest bands of all time. And number one on my list, of course, if you haven't already guessed, is The Beatles. The Beatles influenced every band on this list, pretty much, um, and others as well. And they have probably the best run of consecutive great albums of any band I can name. 
Anyway, I'm um, running out of time. We've got nine seconds left. So thank you for watching this video. And um, I'm looking forward to the comments. Until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.